Well, hello. I'm going to do this in one take, and I'm not going to edit because it's uh, 11 o'clock here in Bismarck, and uh, <laughs> 10 o'clock my time, so about bedtime for me. But anyway, I just got back from watching the movie Dune, and I just felt this need to talk about it, and uh, so here I am. I'm going to do a movie review for the first time ever on this channel. Um, <coughs> and uh, again, 10 at night, so I'm not at my best. But I found out weeks ago that uh, the weekend of our of our state cross country meet is also when Dune was going to come out, and I was going to watch it last year. In fact, last year I said, "Covid or no, this is the movie I'm going to see in the theater," because I never go watch movies in the theater, and uh, it was postponed for a year. So fast forward a year later, and it's coming out same weekend as state cross country. And I thought to myself, "Okay." So, I'm going to go to the state cross-country meet. I'm going to do the Cheyenne River Valley thing that you saw in pens and use and all that. And that, excuse me, then I'm going to come to Bismarck, spend the night. I bought the ticket ahead of time and everything. And uh, watch this movie because, you know, for me to drive home this late at night would be dangerous. So, I know my physical limits. But, anyway, so I uh, watched it at the, was it the Grand 22 Theater? here in Bismarck, and uh, yeah, I, I, I got the 8 o'clock showing, because I, I just wasn't sure if I'd get here in time for the earlier showings, and uh, yeah, so I arrived 7.30, because I realized how long it's been since I've watched a movie in the theater tonight. I uh, Last time I watched one was when I moved to the town I live in now 16 years ago, and they had, uh, I got kind of a welcome wagon gift basket thing, and one of the things in the welcome wagon was a, a movie ticket. And I know it was a James Bond of some kind that I watched in there. And I haven't been to a theater since. I don't, it's just not something I do. But, uh, so I went to the theater and watched the movie. And uh, so I'm going to try to do it without too many spoilers. But uh, one of my concerns going in is, if you haven't read the book, will it make sense? Um, if you've ever watched the David Lynch version from 1984, <laughs> if you haven't read the book, good luck on that one. But yes, it makes sense if you haven't read the book. Now, if you've read the book, you get a lot more out of it. But you don't have to have read the book for it to make sense. Now, the other thing you have to realize is it's only part one. Basically, the director... And if it was day or earlier in the day, I'd probably remember what his name is. Um, he, he only covered about half the novel. And he, he found what I consider a natural breaking point. It's, it's kind of where Paul comes into his own. And instead of being acted upon, starts acting. And uh, anyway, was, I thought it was a good place to break it. Because, uh, yeah, it was a two and a half hour long movie. And... <laughs> I don't, well, I usually uh, don't like to sit that long, so yeah, I was a little stiff by the end of that puppy. But uh, anyway, good breaking point, but not satisfying if you're expecting to go in to have a conclusion. So, uh, some of the things I liked, I thought they picked a good actor for Paul uh, with the David Lynch version and the sci-fi series, mini-series thing. Uh, the, the actors they picked for Paul were too old. Uh, I... Don't know how old this, I can't remember the act, Paul's name either, but whoever, whoever, this guy they picked for Paul actually looks young. Now, in the book, Paul is 15. They didn't pick a 15-year-old actor. I know the guy is out of, out of school, but he's young looking, so he can pull off kind of the Paul thing without being 15. Um, so, good choice. Um, a little wooden, but... Uh, you know, that's actually kind of how the characters are in Frank Herbert's Dune. Uh, he, he doesn't do in-depth, realistic characters. But it works. It's, it's an ideas movie. If, 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 if you uh, have ever heard of the mice quotient, you've got... Uh, anyway, milieu, which is your setting, idea, character, or events... You know, so so I would say that uh, Dune is more of a milieu and uh, ideas type of movie slash book rather than a character-driven book. So anyway, Paul was good. Um, 
the perf I thought he was perfect for the role. Um, Lady Jessica, I thought, kind of balanced that warmth of a mother with the weirdness of being a Bene Gesserit lady. And uh, I thought that actress was pretty good. Uh, the guy that did um, Duke Leto, the Duke Leto, um, Paul's father, I thought was pretty good. He was, uh, he looked familiar, so I'll have to look up who he was. I've seen him in something. Um, but he, he was pretty good. Um, he, he, he definitely did the commanding Duke and also the father thing, and I, I just thought he was very good at it. Um, some of the other characters, like the guy that did Gurney Halleck, who I also recognize, but I can't place him. He was okay. Um, you never, if you hadn't read the book, you wouldn't get get his poetic references and the references to him singing. You'd just be like, okay, what what's his point? Um, and then there's uh, Duncan Idaho, who was played by, I do know this actor's name, Jason Momoa, who is the, um, oh shoot, the Dragon Girl's husband in uh, Game of Thrones. I thought he, I when I heard he'd been cast for that, I was just like, oh, I don't know, but he turned out to be okay. He he did, uh, he was convincing enough, and uh, he actually had probably the best relationship with Paul of any of the characters, um, even a little bit of humor, so, oh, I liked him. Um, Stilgar, I didn't see enough of Stilgar to really get a read on him, but Stilgar's going to more play into the next one. I liked, um... How they did the Reverend Mother. Um, one thing I was sorry to see, there, there's a great, in one of the previews, there's a great scene where um, she talks about how uh, Paul's father is not actually a good leader and he's, well, you know, he's ruler of a planet. She says, well, he's losing it. And he's like, for a better one, she's like, he'll lose that one too. None of that's brought up in the, not, that doesn't appear in the movie. And, uh, Honestly, in the book, Paul isn't in on that whole discussion anyway. That's more of a discussion with the mother, but it was entirely missing. Uh, you get to see, see Thufir Hawat. Um, he's a Mentat. You don't quite get it in the movie that he's a Mentat or what he is. You know, they, they make some nods to it. You know, he, you see his eyes go white when he makes a calculation and... But you don't really get what's going on. Um, the other thing that I don't think was made clear enough, you got the science fiction movie, you got them flying around in spaceships. Why are they fighting with swords? If you haven't read the book, you're not going to get that. I mean, it makes a good spectacle, but you don't get that in the movie. Uh, why they're fighting with swords. It's just not really emphasized enough. And another thing that's not emphasized is why is the spice so valuable? They briefly mention about the navigators use it to navigate. Um, brief mention of longevity, but really, you don't know why the spice is so valuable, just that it is valuable. So that's something else I thought was missing. Um, Dr. Yui has that souk conditioning. You don't really get that either. Uh, you do get why he uh, ends up betraying the Duke and his family, but you don't get the, the souk conditioning thing. It's, it's just not made clear. I did think the lady who played Dr. Liet Kynes was quite good. I almost think it was an improvement on the original book to have Liet Kynes cast as a woman rather than a man. Um, just because of that whole mother thing. You know, like she's mother of a civilization or whatever. Anyway, I just thought it worked better. Uh, I, I did enjoy, you know, in the 1984, one of the few things I liked was... Uh, Late Night Again? <laughs> I don't remember the guy's name, but the, the actor who played uh, Liet Kynes in the 1984 I thought was quite good also, but uh, she brought a very different energy to the character that I thought, hey, this is better. So uh, maybe Frank Herbert should have made Liet Kynes be a woman. I don't know, it just seemed to work in the movie. Uh, you didn't get the great ending with the spice blow and everything for Liet Kynes, but you did get a shocking betrayal, well, not shocking but surprise <laughs> when uh, she got off but you knew that was coming if you read the book um, as far as the visuals I liked the ornithopters I thought they were very well done um, 
honestly, I never really had a good picture in my mind except that they flapped their wings. And I knew to fly they'd have to really flap their wings, so I thought that was handled well. Uh, much better than any <laughs> the uh, David Lynch ones, which I don't think even had wings, or the sci-fi series, which were just... So I thought that was well done. Uh, the Spice Harvester was convincing. I liked that. Uh, I thought the sandworms were well done. The mouths, you know, kind of made me think of real worms. Um, you know, I, I, I did start wondering tonight, why do the sandworms have teeth? But they do so they put them in the book or in sorry in the movie so uh and um uh, you know some of the sets seemed like they were more dramatic than real places uh like the the palace at arakeen or the palace on caladan i just thought eh, these don't feel like real places they feel like well like i said like sets paul's bedroom they did remember the detail from the book that had a fish carving in his bedroom, but uh, I don't know. It didn't feel like a very comfortable bedroom, but then again, this motel room doesn't feel like that much of a bedroom either, so we'll see if I sleep tonight. But it, it could have a lot to do with me still being excited. Um, on a happy note, I did get a, a ticket for a free beverage. There's a bar in this motel, so I... I do have an adult beverage sitting over there to enjoy. Um, <clears throat> usually, I might be sorry about that too because it's late at night and you're not supposed to do that at night. But anyway, um, so uh, <clears throat> I, I, overall the visuals were good. I liked the desert. I liked, you know, I guess they filmed in a real desert. Uh, there was definitely some CGI in it, but I thought everything looked a lot more realistic. You know, the, the David Lynch things just, I don't know. And the sci-fi series just didn't have the budget to make everything look realistic. So I thought that was that was good. I was excuse me, I was really happy to see that. Um and let's see. We'll talk a little bit about the Baron and the Beast Raban and Fade Raltha. Ooh. So Fade never makes an appearance. I don't know if Denny that's his name, Denny Villeneuve. Uh, has decided not to include Fade, or has he just decided he's for later? But honestly, you read the book Dune, Fade doesn't do much. He's like his uncle's favorite. Um, he uh, fights Paul at the end, but... Oh, yes, he's he, he, he tries to plot against his uncle once, too, and his uncle makes him kill all of his favorite slave girls, but he never um, really plays a big role in the book. So, honestly, it wouldn't be a big loss for him not to be in the movie, I'll be honest. Um, <clears throat> but I kind of think he'll make an appearance um, in the second movie if they end up making it. Uh, the Baron, he's okay. I, I guess the actor didn't do much for me, and I don't know why Denny Villeneuve made this choice to have all the Harkonnens be bald, but he did. Um, yeah, down to the Mentap Piter de Vries, um, who you really don't get much introduction to. He's just working for the Baron. So, uh, you don't see the Emperor, but that's just like the book, so that's okay. Um, what else can I say? Glad I watched it. Um, I'd like to watch it again and catch details. So, I don't know if I want to pay theater prices to watch it in a theater again, especially... You know, when I made these plans, I wasn't planning on buying new car tires, so there is that. Um, also a new computer. So, yeah, I probably won't be seeing it again in the theaters, but when it comes out on video, I'll probably be able to buy in a copy so I can stream it again and again and watch it for the details. But I am glad I got to see it. And it's one of those things that, like I said, last year I wanted to, and uh, I've had to wait on it. Um, I think it had a little too much spectacle 
maybe could have focused more on story and background than it did. But I also realized spectacle is what brings in the audiences, so uh, you gotta have it. So, uh, you know, I think of the Lord of the Rings movies, they just got more and more spectacle, more and more stupid action instead of actual story. You know, you had super elves sliding down the tails of elephant critters and stuff. And just So, uh, you know, this, this kind of followed that same trend. So, uh, anyway, uh, I... If you're into science fiction, I recommend seeing it. If you if you like the book, it will not disappoint you. A lot of details are missing, but if you've read the book, um, you'll catch a lot of references that uh, are that somebody who has not read the book will just be like, whatevs. Um, so, yeah, on the whole, I'm glad I went to watch it. So, uh, we'll see if I can calm down enough to go to sleep and. Uh, <laughs> my first movie review. So I want to thank you for watching. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.